Justin, can we start with your thoughts on the, the finish to the game and, and how that played out from your view? It, which part? Well, the, the kick out of bounds. Oh. I don't understand how that um, no, I don't. I don't, because I I'm not 100 percent sure on the rules. Um, uh, yeah, so you know what? Like, I trust the umpire got it right, and um, yeah, my gut feel is we would have stolen it <laughs> if we had to get a shot on goal and we had, we had a drawn or won it. Like, yeah, I admire the boys' fight at the end and never never give up attitude. But yeah, we've got a bit of work to do. So uh, on the last incident. Trust the umpire got it right. The game in general, you would have stolen it. How'd you end up in that position, well, do you think? Well, again, like inefficiency going forward. But we just were, you know, there's just some really uh, sorry, unpredictable work forward to centre. Um, you know, missed opportunities in terms of just hitting the hitting the easy one or hitting the free, especially early when we created opportunities off turnovers and we had players out and we just couldn't connect. And um, yeah, you know, we're just having to work so hard for our goals at the moment, clearly. Um, and uh, you know, that's our our work for the centre needs to improve. We need to become more predictable to each other, uh, and we need to get better around the ball. Like you know, I don't know what it ended up, but. Before we went on a little run in the last quarter, it was you know we were minus ten centre bounce. Like, good luck trying to own field position with that number. Um, we're better than that, and we've got to start showing that. That, that clearance battle that really got on top of you. Their habits of playing was that aspect. Yeah, it's it's disappointing because um, you know, we we feel like it's a strength, but it's not a strength until you show it. So we need to get our hands dirty, and. Um, yeah, it wasn't until the last 10 minutes where we got a sniff and started playing to win. Started crashing in, bashing bodies, uh, taking the game on. And, um, yeah, it needed to come way earlier. Could it be a sense of complacency where the guys look who's next to them and think, yeah, we're, we're good in this aspect. We should be good. We've got two good back as well. Uh, no, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Um, and... You know, it's complacency. It's going to be different for every individual. Uh, some are going to be fighting a bit of doubt. Some are maybe complacent. Um, some are trying too hard. So we're going to get to the bottom of it for each individual. But as a collective, we need to be more proactive, more predictable, um, and we need to get on the front foot. <laughs> yeah, you're probably looking at that wrong because it wasn't that. It was um, trying to get guys through the middle of the ground. <laughs> uh, we tried to put Switter through the middle of the ground to give us a bit of energy at ground level. Um, you know, Aishi through the middle of the ground to try and get a bit of energy at centre bounce. So, um, it's, yeah, we we're trying to fix the source before the forward line. The forward line was secondary and, you know, Jager got pushed out for Switter at centre bounce and ended up getting on the end of a couple. So that's a that's a positive to come out of it. But, um, you know, we're trying to fix the source, trying to get a little bit more proactive through there um, rather than putting numbers through the, the forward line. Do you know what your forward line is going to look like at the moment? Like, obviously, midfield forms like you inevitably the score you mentioned. How do you work out what the best mix is going to be inside the midfield to make it easier to score? Uh, well, I think... I'll, I like the mix down there probably better tonight. I thought, um, you know, we were able to tackle and pressure and, um, you know, we look dangerous at ground level. We, we, can't, we, we just couldn't kick any goals from ground level either, but we look more dangerous at ground level. I thought still got a good aerial contest um, with the four smalls. So we'll keep tinkering with that and we need, well, we'll, we'll probably stay with that, but we'll keep tinkering with personnel. Um, you know, clearly Fife didn't come up this, uh, today. Um, you know, Tab's had to sub out twice, so yeah, we need to look at look at personnel as well. What happened with Fife? Can you talk us through the situation and how bad it is? Well, he's been carrying a plantar fascia for a while, and uh, yeah, just didn't react to last week's game and pulled up really sore. So uh, yeah, we're at the point where he didn't get up for the game, obviously. So is, he in a, is there anything? We've heard stories about people jumping off tables and going through an injury. Do you know what he needs to do to be able to? Be okay with that? Uh, he probably needs a bit of a rest. So, um, 
yeah, medical staff have done some work behind the scenes. Um, now, obviously, didn't play today. He'll be off legs for a little bit, trying to um, maximise um, a bit of a rest. Um, and he probably needs a, a needs needs another week just to um, calm it down. Uh, yeah, well, probably only he can speak to that. But, yeah, I clearly saw enough for him not to feel like he'd get through a game. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's one of those injuries that every time you walk, it stretches it and makes it sore. So it is debilitating in that sense. So, um, yeah, we, we just need to get on top of it. How is he emotionally given the injuries that he's had over the uh, he probably He probably thinks it's a little speed hump. Yeah, uh, the rest of his body's feeling really good and he's frustrated by this, but he sees it as a bit of a speed hump and if he can get this right, he feels like, you know, the rest of his body's holding up really well and he can have a real um, prolonged crack at it. So, so with a week to rest it up and then I guess building up again, what do you think the minimum stint would be for one start lines? Oh, probably two weeks. Well, he just needs to get to work and maximise on some of the opportunities. It's been probably two weeks of, you know, nearly moments. And uh, you know, three shots on goal last week, they were all reasonably gettable and some drop marks inside 450. So, you know, he's creating enough opportunities. Um, he just needs to keep working on his game to create a few more, but take the ones he's creating. Like he's just having a lot of nearly moments at the moment. So I expect, I'm hoping that changes, but yeah. See how he goes. Do you think that sums up your start to the season? You've, you've had nearly moments, I guess, in both games. Do you think that that would be a fair assessment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is, but it probably, probably lets off the hook a little bit as well. Like I don't, I don't think that hard edge has, has been there as often enough. Uh, there's moments in the game. Probably, I think it was the start of the third quarter where we started. Um, lifting our pressure rating and started getting after them and causing turnovers in good areas and we didn't capitalise on it but you know, it would, like I said before it took till you know, pretty late in the game for us to get that energy right around the ball and yeah we're just probably lacking that hard edge and um, not not everyone but across the board and um, you're not going to be a you're not going to be a good team if you don't get weighted numbers. Um, yeah, chipping in, so we need to um, get a more even contribution. Is it frustrating to see that you can kick three goals in three minutes? You know, that finish was, it was, it was so exciting, but it just wasn't there you know, in the first three quarters. Yeah, yeah, well, it is. And we've got to, um, yeah, keep working on our method, four to centre. You know, both, both weeks we've won the inside 50 counts you know, pretty, pretty clearly or, or well, well enough, um, and haven't kicked a winning score, so... Yeah, we need we need to keep getting to work with our mid forward connection and uh, being predictable with each other and yeah, getting a better result. You spoke about a spark as well. Do you think that was Michael Waters when he came out? He was, you know, exceptional for three minutes. Yeah, no, he was, uh, and you know he's got a bit of class about him and yeah, guys guys who make good decisions and finish their work off four to centre, are, um, yeah, worth their weight in gold. So. Uh, yeah, we took a bit of a gamble playing him as a sub, but feel like he got good minutes and he's out there doing top up running now. So hopefully that can kick start his season. And you dive into that few minutes next week? Uh, yeah, that's the plan. You touched on subbing out Abner again. Is he struggling every game? Yeah, he's. Yep, yep. So he started cramping in both hemis through the yeah, back, oh, middle of the third quarter. So yeah, that, that was the decision to get him out of the game. Um, you know, we clearly wanted to get Sonny in around that time anyway. So, yeah, because he was yeah, cramping, uh, yeah, we decided to take him out. But is that kind of a build up from recent years, I guess, not being out in the park as often? Possibly. We'll have to dig a bit deeper into that. Then yeah. uh high performance team will do that and, yeah, see what it flushes out. Oh no, it's probably more around around stoppage. I think um, you know we can be better with our body work at times, um, better with uh, you know our, our movement. 
our movement and, and trying to get the opposition reacting to us. I thought, you know, their big bodies are able to probably push us around a little bit. Um, yeah, and then just probably hold our shape around the contest. So it felt like we collapsed into pressure and couldn't get our tackles done. And then they were able to get us on the outside and get field position from that. So, um, yeah, we'll get to work uh, and try and get back to, you know, our best in there. Need to do it pretty soon. Oh, it's probably too early to say that. Oh, we'll get to that during the week um, and what selection flushes out and what our best mix is. But, yeah, we're probably too early to comment. We asked you about the finish to the game, obviously. Um, earlier in the match, Tavana takes a mark on the goal line, has his shot, scores the goal, and then, the, then a, a, a review was called, which turned me from behind because they thought he jumped over the line. The review was called after he'd taken his shot. Pretty important six points. Well, from what I've seen happen in the past with that process is that they automatically call for a review and they review the mark before the goal's kicked. That's what I've seen happen in the past. So I was surprised it happened that way. But like I said about the other umpiring, I sit here and trust that they got the process right. It just it looked different to the way they've done it in the past. I've, I've seen them you know, review that before the goal is kicked in the past. Yep. Yeah, so we'll seek some clarification from the AFL, but trust that they got it right. Did you hear the siren before? Do you think the siren went at the end of the game before the ball was out of bounds? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Good on you guys. Thank you.